Well, hey everyone, welcome back to the cabin. This is Q&A Sunday, episode number five. I'm glad these are going over like they are. I'm getting so many great comments and tons and tons of questions have come in. I could sit here for an hour answering questions, but I really can't make my videos much longer than 10 or 12 minutes because the way that we have to upload, like I told you before, is we have to take the Ranger or the snowmobile down to where the vehicles are parked and then drive to town and upload. And sitting at McDonald's trying to upload is really maddening. And the videos take a while sometimes. And so to have a video that's really longer than 12 minutes is just kind of out of the question. But when we build a garage over on the other property, most likely we'll have some high-speed internet put in over there and get this uploading issue resolved. Yeah, but lots of great questions have come in. And if I haven't answered your question yet, and I don't in this segment, just uh, hang tight because it's on the list and I will get to it as soon as possible. So let's get started. <clears throat> how long have I been journaling and how did I get started? That's a good question. I started writing a journal in 1980, and I'm not really sure what got me started, but I think it was all stemming from being up here when I was a kid. See, when we used to come up here, my dad had a clipboard with a bunch of note paper, and we used to write a little entry, like, um, you know, Mom and Dad, John and Jim came up for the weekend, did some trout fishing, saw a moose, you know, maybe an inch or two of text. So then when I bought my own property, when I was in my late teens there and started building a cabin, I was writing excerpts like that. I wrote maybe an inch or two of text at a time. And then once I moved in when I was 21, I started writing in that full time because every day was an adventure. And it was. <laughs> that was some pretty rough living back then. But such fond memories of that. So I think that's how I got started. And I'm so glad that I did. I really enjoy it. I've been sharing uh, journal excerpts over on the Patreon page. Um, just got started with that. Uh, been building momentum over there. I, I wanted to get through the first month over there to see how things go and get everything ironed out. And now everything's going good. And uh, we're going to get over there and doing uh, journal entries on a regular basis. Uh, people have been enjoying it. And it's, it's been good. It's been a good experience so far. And I want to thank everyone that's followed me over there. Yep. It's been of mutual benefit. Yeah, we've had a, a lot of fun so far. Um, this question, I get asked this a lot. Uh, like someone asked me for the last couple of weeks, what stove would I recommend for a 14 by 22 cabin? And I get asked similar questions a lot. Unfortunately, there's no cut and dry answer to that because it doesn't depend that much on the stove as it does on the insulation. It depends on how well the, ins the cabin is insulated. My little cabin over there in New York is insulated so well that at nighttime, even in the wintertime, I really don't have a fire going. If I, especially if I have somebody over and they're sleeping on the top bunk. Um, I've showed in my videos in the past, it might be 20 below outside, walking around barefoot, no shirt. It's really, really warm in there. And I get up in the morning and you can barely see any coals at all in the firebox. And the place was toasty. That's mainly because I keep the cold air from seeping through the floor. A lot of people, when they're insulating a place, they put all of their focus on the walls and the roof and very little focus on insulating the floor when the floor is just as important as the roof. Because if you have heat loss going anywhere, it's going to act like a vacuum effect and it pulls the cold through the floor. And I've spent an awful lot of time in cabins over the years that are warm up here and cold down here. But once I started putting the bubble foil in the floor, it eliminated that altogether. Now this cabin here, this is 24 by 24. 
In most of my life, it had two wood stoves in here. When both stoves were cranking, it was comfortable in here. You go to bed, get up in the morning, and if nobody tended to stoves at night, it was cold in here. Okay? That was because it wasn't insulated very well. Same with my first cabin. Now we've got this buttoned up, but what really made all the difference in the world was the bubble foil that I put in the floor and in the skirting. Skirting is so important. You saw in a video, one of the New Hampshire Cabin Project series, I think might have been the last one, where I put the skirting there, and then I put one layer of bubble foil on the inside of the skirting. And because of that, on the outside of the skirting, the ground is hard as concrete. On the inside of the skirting, not much more than a foot away, the ground is soft like chocolate cake. So it really doesn't depend that much on your stove as it does on your insulation, how you go about it. But if you want a stove recommendation for a small place like I have in New York, that old Shenandoah stove, if you can find one of those, they are fabulous. Very, very easy to control. We'll keep a fire all night. If you have a bigger place, this Kitchen Queen is fantastic stove. Yeah, but unfortunately, I just couldn't give you a cut and dry answer. Say, oh, for X amount of square feet, you need this stove. But what I do pay attention to is the size of the firebox. I don't like a stove with a little firebox. I want one that's actually more tall than deep. I like a good tall one. Because if, like here, this fire has only been out twice since we kindled it when the stove went in. It's been burning 24 hours a day since before Thanksgiving, except for twice when we let it go out so I could clean the chimney. So when you're burning like that, you get coals and ash that build up and build up and build up. And if you have a firebox that's not very deep, then you run out of room for wood. Other than that, put all your focus on your insulation. A lot of people ask about the gas refrigerator. Do I have to regulate the temp in the gas refrigerator and how long does a bottle of propane last? Okay, gas refrigerators are notorious for freezing things, especially the older models like the old Savelles. This one here, this little guy here, when we light it, we put it full blast. Within a few days, we turn it down a couple of notches because it's starting to freeze things. Then about two weeks into it, maybe on your third week, it's building up a lot of frost inside. And then when the frost builds up, the performance goes down. So like on the third week, we turn it back up a little bit, rather, I mean, should turn it to make it a little bit colder. And then this tank, a 30 pounder will last just shy of a month for this little refrigerator. When the tank goes out, we defrost it, put a new tank, fire it back up again. And then it performs outstanding. The gas freezer that we bought will run right around 20 days on a 30 pounder, give or take. And I say give or take because not every place puts the same amount of propane in the tank. I've filled, had some filled up a tractor supply where they put like six and a half pounds of propane and then on other occasions they put 7.2. So of course that's going to determine how long you will get out of it. But both the gas fridge and the gas freezer has been very, very affordable convenience for living out here. Yep. Um, the holes in the soffits. A while back uh, in one of the cabin series, you saw me drilling some holes in the soffits before I insulated the ceiling. Well, a lot of people were asking how I was going to keep rodents and birds and bats and stuff from going up into those holes. I had restructured all the soffits. I restructured them, put in the soffit vent, and closed everything. I did that way before I drilled those holes. So when I drilled those holes, I didn't have to put wire or anything because it was already protected. I had a game plan going on and executed that, put the plan into action, got it done. Works perfect. Pokey. In the Frankie and the Boss song, what the hell is a pokey? <laughs> I get asked that quite a bit because it says the pokey up in that tree. It's a porky. It's a porky up in that tree, a porcupine. But 
I come to think about it, they should have been called pokey because that's what they are if you touch them. They're awful pokey. <laughs> okay, are we going to have solar on the cabin here? And am I going to film the process? Yeah, a lot of you are aware that I had bought a 400 watt kit for the New York cabin and I never installed it. You know, a lot of people were waiting for that install. Well, I was going to install it, but then when we changed, I uh, changed our plans and we're going to move up here. What's the sense in installing it over there, right? And here, we're just too heavily forested and working on the trees. But um, even at that, it's going to be a mediocre solar setup. So when I do install it, I will film it. But you don't want to be taking solar installation and electric advice from me okay i i know just enough to get get us through okay we get lights in here and stuff like that but i still use suicide cords so you don't want to take advice from me there's other channels where you can get better advice from <laughs> okay one more and i'm going to wrap it up what are my current goals for this year well i can tell you this year, my goal is to have a lot of fun. Already been having a lot of fun. Last year was all work and no play, but it was worth it. Like I told you before, to achieve goals, you gotta accept some sacrifice. And there was a lot of sacrificing going on in 2017. Been out hiking a lot, snowshoeing a lot, been ice fishing, just having fun. And I haven't touched a carpentry tool since November. <laughs> I love it. But my goals for this year, I'm gonna get a bunch of trees cut and get the groundwork done on that other property and get a garage put up over there. Um, there's a company nearby that puts up garages. They have these garage packages and they're really affordable. So I probably will just hire somebody to build it. That way it can free, my, free up my time to do other things. I wanna put the screen porch right out this door. I wanna definitely get that on and get the backside of the camp all done with the cedar shingles that and um, get a, a small building put up here to park the machines in in a woodshed but that's fun stuff building the small buildings like that in a woodshed I enjoy doing that so um, that will free up a lot of time and I want to get back to the New York cabin and spend some time there but primarily the goals for this year is to have fun I'm going to do a lot of canoeing and camping and hiking and go to the White Mountains. And yeah, yeah, all the stuff I didn't get to do last year. Yep. So I guess that's it for now. I'm going to wrap it up. Keep the questions coming. And like I said, if I haven't answered you yet, you're on the list. And I've been checking off my list as I go along. So all the best to you folks. And God bless. Frank and the boss out of walking in the woods, living life happy and free. Tracks in the snow everywhere they go, there's a pokey way up in that tree. A beaver built a pond where they have some fun, taking life a day at a time. Best friends until the end. Frankie and the boss. Frankie and the boss. Frankie and the Boss